Hi viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, let us discuss the chapter Income from Other Sources. As per the Income Tax Act, there are five heads of income. Whatever income an associate earns, that income should be categorized into any of the five heads. The five heads of income are income from salaries, house property, business of profession, capital gains and other sources. If the SSC earns any income by the way of employer-employee relationship that will be charged under the head salaries. If he earns any rental income that will be charged under the head house property. If he earns any income by doing any trading activity or doing a business then that will be charged under business and if he runs a profession doctors, lawyers, chartered accountants that will be charged under the head professional income. If he sells capital assets and in that transaction if he incurs a profit or a loss then that will be uh, charged under the head capital gains. The last head that is income from other sources under this head the income which does not fit into the definition of the other four heads of income will be charged under this head. That is why this head of income is called as the last and the residuary head of income. Any income which does not fit into the definition of the first four heads of income will be brought to tax under this head of income. Now let us see some of the incomes which are chargeable under the head income from other sources. The first one is dividend. Dividend is an income earned by a shareholder of a company out of its distributable profits. So this is not a salary income or house property income or business or profession or capital gains. So it has to be taxed under the head other sources. So for the purpose of uh, taxation I am dividing dividend into two types. Dividend received from an Indian company and dividend received from a foreign company. Dividend received from an Indian company is exempted income. You need not bring this income to tax at all. Expenses cannot be claimed. On the other hand, foreign company, dividend received from a foreign company is a taxable income and expenses can be claimed as a deduction. I will repeat again, dividend from Indian company is exempted, expenses cannot be claimed. Foreign company, taxable, expenses can be claimed. Moving on to the next income, that is cash flow income. Cash flow income as the name itself tell you, it is an income which is earned casually or without any stipulation of such income. Examples of cash flow income are lottery winnings, card game, puzzles, gambling, betting etc. This income is a taxable income and expenses cannot be claimed. When I say expenses cannot be claimed, there is an exception to this rule. That is, if the income is earned by the SSC, by the activity of owning and maintaining race horses, then expenses can be claimed. For the other incomes, expenses cannot be claimed. That means for lottery winnings, card game, gambling, puzzles, betting etc. For all the other incomes, expenses cannot be claimed. Expenses can be claimed only for owning and maintaining race horses. Another important provision under uh, this cash flow income is regarding grossing up. What is this grossing up? Usually tax will be deducted at source at 30 percentage for cash flow income. So we have to calculate the gross amount and bring it to tax. When should we do this grossing up? If the amount exceeds 10,000 that is if the income exceeds 10,000 and also the words net or received is given in the question then you have to gross it up. How will you gross it up? Amount received into 100 divided by 70. This is the formula for grossing up. I will explain you this with an example. If in the question the statement is like lottery winnings 50,000. Here the amount exceeds 10,000 but the words net or received is not given so you don't have to gross it up. You can bring this 50,000 directly to the outer column. On the other hand, if the statement in the question is like lottery winnings received 50,000 rupees. Here 
the amount exceeds 10,000 and also the word received is given in the question. So, you have to gross it up. 50,000 into 100 divided by 70, whatever answer you get, bring it to the outer column. So, I repeat this once again. Cash flow income is a taxable income. Expenses cannot be claimed and you will gross up only when the words net or received is given and also the amount exceeds 10,000 rupees. Letting on hire, plant, furniture, machinery, etc. This income will be charged under the head income from other sources only if it is not charged under the head business or profession. This is a taxable income and expenses incurred can be claimed as a deduction. Moving on to the next income, family pension. We all know what pension is. Pension is the amount received by an employee after his retirement. Family pension means even after the death of the employee, if the employer gives pension to the family members of the deceased employee, then such pension is called as family pension. Family pension is a taxable income except for two categories. If the pension is received by the widow of UNO employee or pension received by gallantry awardees. For these two categories, it is an exempted income. For the other categories, it is a taxable income. When we bring family pension to tax, the SSC can claim a standard deduction of 33 1 by 3 percentage of the pension that has been received or 15,000, whichever is least. The least amount can be claimed as a deduction and then family pension will be brought to tax. The next income is interest on securities. This income is also a taxable income. For the purpose of taxation, we can classify this interest income into four categories. Less tax-free government security, less tax government security, tax-free commercial security and less tax commercial security. Tax-free government security is an exempted income. You need not bring this income to tax at all. Less tax government security is a taxable income and you need not gross up. As I already told you under cash flow income, for cash flow income the tax deducted at source is 30 percentage but for interest on securities the tax deducted at source is 10 percentage. So we need not gross up for less tax government security. Tax free commercial security. It is a taxable income and you must gross it up. You have to gross up tax free commercial security income. Less tax commercial security is also a taxable income and you will gross up only when the words net or received is given in the question. The formula for grossing up is 100 divided by 90. So watch my video till the end. I will some of the other incomes which will be taxed under the head income from other sources are rent from subletting, royalty income, director's fees, ground rent, agricultural income from a land situated outside India. Agricultural income is just like a dividend income. Dividend from Indian companies exempted in foreign country is taxable. In the same way, agriculture income earned inside India is exempted and agriculture income earned from a land situated outside India is taxable. Interest from bank deposits, salary of MLA and MP. When we talk about salary of MLA and MP, MP salary is taxable. At the time, uh, all the daily allowance of MLA and MP is exempted income. Income from undisclosed source, income from leasehold property, remuneration receipt for doing examination work. So all these income are taxable income. Any expenses incurred to earn the income can be claimed as a deduction. So far, we have discussed the incomes which will be charged under the head income from other sources. Now, let us see how these incomes will be brought to tax. The first thing what I have given you in this slide is family pension. The, in the question it is given as family pension received from the government of Karnataka rupees 30,000. So I will uh, tell you the provisions regarding family pension. Family pension is a taxable income except in the case of uh, pension received by the widow of UNO employee or pension received by the family member of gallantry awardees. Except these two, all the other family pension are taxable. 
this family pension is received from the government of Karnataka and hence it is taxable. So, I have written family pension and I have written the amount in the inner column. Why I have written it in the inner column is the SSE can claim a deduction of 33 1 by 3 percentage or 15,000 whichever is less from the pension. So, I have made the deduction. Deduction 30,000. 30,000 is the amount that has been received as pension into 33 1 by 3 percentage. 33 1 by 3 percentage if you round it off it will come to 1 by 3. So, 30,000 into 1 by 3 will give you 10,000 or 15,000 whichever is less. So, the least of these two amount is 10,000. So, I am writing 10,000 in the inner column. Actual pension 30,000, deduction is 10,000. So, we can take 20,000 to the outer column. The taxable family pension is 20,000 rupees after making deduction. Now, the next one. Royalty received from the publisher rupees 50,000. An amount of rupees 5,000 has been spent on book, stationery, etc. Royalty income is taxable under the head other sources and any expenses that has been incurred to earn that income can be claimed as a deduction. So, royalty income is 50,000. I have written it in the inner column. I have deducted the expenses. 5,000 rupees has been spent on books and stationery. So, I have made the deduction of 5,000 rupees and after deducting that 5,000, I have brought 45,000 to the outer column. The next is winnings from lotteries, net rupees 56,000, purchase lottery tickets rupees 200. Winnings from lotteries is a casual income. So, casual income is a taxable income. Expenses cannot be claimed. If the words net or received is given, you have to gross it up. So, winnings from lotteries, the word net is given. So, I am grossing it up 56,000 into 100 divided by 70. The formula for grossing up is amount received into 100 divided by 70. The amount that has been received in this problem is 56,000 into 100 divided by 70. I have 80,000 rupees. I cannot claim any deduction because this is a casual income. So, the expense of purchasing lottery tickets cannot be claimed as a deduction. I am taking this 80,000 directly to the outer column. The next one is dividend from a foreign company. Dividend from Indian company is exempted and foreign company is taxable. So, dividend from foreign company I have taken 10,000 to the outer column. There is no expenses. If there is expenses, I can make it as a deduction. The next one is salary for a part-time job, rupees 21,000. Salary, whether it is given for a full-time job or a part-time job, there will be employer-employee relationship. So, this income will not be taxed under the head other sources. It will be taxed under the head salaries. The next is dividend from cooperative society. So, dividend from cooperative society is different from dividend from a company. Company is a different form of organization and cooperative society is a different form of organization. Only dividend from Indian company is exempted. So, dividend from cooperative society is taxable. So, I have brought the amount directly to the outer column. Cash worth rupees 1 lakh was found in the previous year in the bank locker, the source of which could not be explained. So, there was an amount of rupees 1 lakh in the SSE's locker and he could not explain the way by which he has earned that income. So, this income will be called as income from undisclosed source and this will be taxable under the head other sources. So, income from undisclosed source I have brought 1 lakh to the outer column. The next one is income from subletting of a house taken on rent rupees 5000, rent paid rupees 3000. Subletting income is taxable under the head other sources. So, income from subletting 5000 in the inner column, the rent that has been paid that is expenses can be claimed as a deduction. So, I have deducted the rent that has been paid 3000 rupees I have deducted and I have brought 2000 as taxable income to the outer column. Now, this is how we have to present the answer. I have given the title, Computation of Taxable Income under the head income from other sources, a particular column and two amount columns. So, family pension, royalty income, winnings from lotteries, dividend from foreign company, dividend from cooperative society, income from undisclosed stores, income from subletting. I have found the total. It is 2,80,000. This 2,80,000 is the income from other sources. This is how we have to calculate the answer.
in the previous example i have not included interest on securities uh, i have already explained you the provisions regarding interest on securities when it, uh, when we have to work out the answer the first step is to identify whether a security is a tax free security less tax government security tax free commercial security and less tax commercial security i have given you certain keywords for easily identifying those securities the keywords for tax free government securities are national special post office gold treasury and the word tax free if these words are present in the statement then that is a tax free government security if only central government or state government are present it is a less tax government security apart from this if name of a company is present it will it will be a commercial security and a commercial security if the word tax free is specifically present in the statement it is a tax free commercial security only the name of the company is present then it is a less tax commercial security uh, so i'll explain these with certain examples 8% tax free government of india loan so tax free government the words are very specifically given in the statement so it will come under tax free government security the provision for tax free government securities is it is an exempted income so i have marked exempted there the next one what i have given is 9.5 percentage secure debentures of a cotton mill rupees 10000 so cotton mill this is not a government thing this is a commercial act uh, commercial company so the word tax free is not present so it will come under less tax commercial security it is a taxable income and it will be grossed up only when net or received is given in the question in the statement net or received is not given so you don't have to gross it up so 9.5% secure debentures of cotton mills rupees 10000 10000 into 9.5 divided by 100 the answer is 950 36000 10 percentage tax free commercial security tax free commercial it is given very clearly so this will come under tax free commercial security it is a taxable income and it must be grossed up so look at the answer 36000 10 percentage tax free commercial security 36000 into 10 divided by 100 into 100 divided by 90 this 100 divided by 90 why i have shown here is to gross up the net amount the answer that i get is 4000 rupees 4000 received as interest on up government securities this is also specifically given as government security this is state government security and the word tax free is not there so it will come under less tax government security it is a taxable income and you need not gross it up so i have written the 4000 directly in the outer column the next one is interest from post office savings account post office is a key word under tax free government security so this is an exempted income 3600 received as interest on paper mills limited paper mill is a commercial security the word tax free is not present so it will come under less tax commercial security it is a taxable income and it has to be grossed up only when net or received is given in this question the word received is given so we have to gross it up the formula for grossing up is 100 divided by 90 so 3600 into 100 divided by 90 the answer 4000 i have written it in the outer column hope you found this video useful thank you for watching